Obviously, your kid needs a male role model. Because I'll be honest with you, he's soft. We can soft. Because he's four. Because he's your son. No, you spent all your time reading books and looking at numbers and letters like they mean something. They do. Do you know how to read? <laughs> I get by, all right? What do you know? You know, like red means stop. Great. Green means go. Good. Yellow's the other one. TBTL. Well, you have found my flabbergast button, and guess what? You've pressed it. Do you eat chocolate? Yes. Do you eat, do you drink soda? Yes. Do you eat fatty foods? Yes. And a lot of people ask me, are you eating cookies at, late at night? And I say, of course I am. What we are dealing with here is a perfect engine, uh, an eating machine. It's really a miracle of evolution. That must be weird for you, huh? Kimmel's now the new king of late night, and you're still doing a pod cart? They say, you snooze, you lose. Well, we snossed. Look what we lost. All right. Hello. Good morning and welcome, everyone, to a Tuesday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. Welcome to the Internet. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. I'm an activist and house party enthusiast. Coming to you from the Madrona Hill studio, perched high above the mighty Columbia, where we are looking at another absolutely stunning, gorge day. California got sunshine. It's a shame we have to be indoors to do the podcast. Can we have class outside today? I guess I am technically the teacher or maybe the co-teacher. I guess we could do that. You know, we're already here. Let's just... Um, oh, Ma, Pa, it's just beautiful. Let's just go ahead and uh, get underway with episode 4,175 in a collector series. Let the fun begin. Because I have a lot of anger to express related to the Comcast Corporation. <laughs> I uh, my, my battle with Xfinity around uh, watching the Seattle Mariners games that I'm now paying for, it continues. And my anger is really hardening. It's ossifying into a diamond of rage. Holding grudges is just another word for having standards. And I'd like to, um, I'd like to try to process some of that if I can here on this Tuesday. And I'd like to talk to this guy, the longest running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ships. He is Andrew. And boom goes the dynamite. Walsh. And he's joining me right now. Good morning, my friend. I think my sense of time is messed up today. I'm coming off of a um, okay. coming off of a bunch of strange dreams. Slept kind of late today, and I had those intense kind of action-packed. I don't even know if they were stress dreams, but very yeah, they were. Let me let me just make it clear. They were stress streams. They, what was happening? They, well, I don't think that I want to take you on that journey because I don't think I can make it make sense. And I want to have a, just an ounce of respect for the listener for once in my gosh darn life. But um, it was the type of dream. Well, we do where, have a whole sound effect for it, you know. That is true. I mean, do you you don't do you have it over there? Do you? Want you look like a dream catcher came like to life. <laughs> Wow, this is the long dream court. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Take me to dream court, baby. Man, that song goes so much harder than oh, it needed to. So good. That and Muppet Babies. It really is. like a. Yeah. That's a real certified banger. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. And didn't we listen to... They reworked it, but kept the sort of structure of it for the new Night Court, right? I heard somebody I heard somebody promoting their TV show recently. Might have been your pal John Cryer, in fact, saying that it comes mm. on right after Night Court, and I thought I was in the 80s again. Oh, right. He's in that new one, I think, where he's like a cuck. <laughs> I don't know Did what you, the premise of the I show is. I hope you said cook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, it's Night Chef, where he is a cook. No, I, I get this. I know nothing about this show, except I think, like, his his ex-wife is remarried, and he's friends with the new guy. Oh, they all live together. It's based on a true story. That That's right. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. a, it's a couple that the ex still lives with them for the sake of the children. Um, I don't think they use is the word. Is he the ex, or is he the, the new marketing. guy? I have, I have no idea. Um, but I, it was a passing <laughs> reference. But the, the fact that it was coming on after Night Court, I had to, like, and it was John Cryer saying it. I had to sort of do a double take on that. But uh, I don't, I, I honestly don't want to get into the details of my dream. Just suffice to say it had some, like, kind of recurring elements of dreams of mine like rushing to get mm. to the airport getting lost mm. in parking garages and administrative buildings and stairwells and stuff like that and like running around this one was intensified though because guns were involved i had a gun Ooh. a police Whoa. officer had a gun 
Um, the police was, were called. The, there was a I, I something. I don't know if they were called or if I was speeding or what happened there. Then I was trying to get the gun onto a plane legally. I wanted to legally do it. I'm in real life for new listeners. I don't own a gun. I'm not a gun rights activist at all. But it was a it was just a strange, very high paced dream where I woke up. And I said to Genevieve, wow, that was an intense dream. I won't go into detail, but it was intense. Went back to sleep and it continued, like picked up Whoa. right where it left off. So I am coming into the show today having just woken up, but feeling like I've just been through the ringer emotionally mm -hmm. and with adrenaline. And the reason I said it feels like my sense of timing is off is because before the show, and I'm just going to say this, before the show, you said really briefly, hey, do you mind pausing? I just need to, um, before we get going, do you mind if I uh, use the restroom really quickly, which mm -hmm. you did. And then I started to adjust my camera and I feel like you would, you were, it felt like you were gone for 15 seconds before you came back. And I commented on your speedy. Well, here's the thing. It was one of those things where I had to go a little bit mm -hmm. and I thought, mm, do I have, is this something that I want to hold for 1.5 hours? Right. But it wasn't a full on situation sure. it was like it was it was a mini it was a mini situation you're probably a little so nervous why. i get that when i'm nervous yeah exactly um, it's like when i used to play baseball for the green greenwood boys and girls club the positive place for kids mm -hmm. and when i was in the hole or even the double hole which we called snake eyes i would feel like i had like to solitary? pee so bad they put the kids in yes. solitary it was the special housing unit it was the wow. shoe <laughs> wow no the um on deck was you know you're the next you're in the batter circle and then in the hole is you're about to go on deck. Oh, so you're basically okay. two away from hitting. And then in uh, Snake Eyes is you're on deck to be in the hole. I see. You're, you're not in the hole and you're not on deck and you're not batting. So you're basically four away, which if you think about it, there's only nine hitters. You're almost always going to be approaching that's Snake nice. Eyes. Yeah, that's nice. This is just not that many positions where you're not snake eyes because they're just you know that's half of the people in the lineup for so then in the hold means you're probably standing on the steps of the dugout if your dugout yes. has steps which and if maybe, you're me yeah. you are feeling like you have to pee so badly mm -hmm, yeah and then as soon as you go up and take four to five pitches without swinging the bat which was my entire mm -hmm. move that season mm -hmm. And you run to first base because they walked you because they're children mm -hmm. they're terrible at pitching mm -hmm. it's smart man. and um it's a money ball <laughs> And then immediately the your the need to pee goes away. Yep. Yep. I get that. I just, just had nerves. that when I went on the radio a couple of weeks ago. I had that feeling of I had just gone to the restroom and then I was nervous and I felt like I had to go again, but I told myself there's nothing in there anymore, Andrew. <laughs> um but anyway, then you you did your intro today and that felt very speedy as well. It seemed like I was being introduced and it really truly feels like I'm in a bit of a time warp. How long have we been recording? Has it been like two hours yet or two minutes? 1.5 hours. Wow, yes. Time is By messed up clock. right now. I guess I should tell yeah. you more about my dreams. Uh, Andrew, I am. <laughs> I had to videotape what was going on with Xfinity yesterday and send it to you. So you didn't think I was just trying to come up with hashtag content for the show. Because this whole situation with me trying to get Root Sports working on my television, it's moved into parody. It has moved into some sort of a uh, sort of a, a comic play about a guy who is the, the forces of the universe are working against him when he's just trying to pay his money to a major corporation to watch his baseball team play baseball. Like I called them yesterday, which I didn't want to do because I had already gone online. I had, uh, you know, activated the extra special account. And uh, and it was it should have kicked in, but it wasn't. And so yesterday at about four o'clock, I called them and I got on the phone with a guy. You got on the who, phone oh, I, with a guy. Congrats. I got on the phone with a guy, not to brag. No, I'm well, being serious. I mean, at Xfinity, that that's that's an accomplishment in and of itself. I, I th and this w and this is what happens with these kinds of things. I thought that oh my goodness, I'm talking to a human. Well, this is going to get worked out. Like I've. I've managed to do that uh, most uh, unusual of things, which is found a human being who works for the Comcast Corporation. Uh, this guy was a little interesting, Andrew. I actually yeah. made notes of the things he said to me while we were waiting for various things to process. Now, I mentioned already it was about 4 p.m. I called him. And he, <laughs> while we were waiting for something, he said, did you grab your coffee today? Huh. 
Okay. Which has to be a training thing. Like there must be something going on at Comcast corporate in whatever country this person was in. My guess was this person was not stateside. Where they're like, if there's some downtime, it might break the ice to ask the customer if they've had their coffee today. Huh, maybe. I've never gotten that. I hadn't either yeah. until yesterday. Uh, and then uh, I said, uh, well, yeah, it's four o'clock here. So I had the coffee a while ago. He goes, me too. <laughs> okay. He yeah. said, I have to have my coffee, right? And I said, yeah. Yeah, that's sort of how I feel. And he said, oh, that's great. Did you get him started on <laughs> wine? <laughs> no, if I had known, if I had known that this wasn't going to work out, I would have been three drinks deep during this conversation. Mm -hmm. it, so then he also uh, at some point uh, said, you have too many devices connected to the Internet. And I was like, mm -hmm. first of all, how do you even know that? Secondly, you second of all, I don't think that's the case. And also, you're and I, a I literally cable looked around. Provider. Like, this is a cable provider. I know it all comes. Well, they also the, do my yeah, internet. Yeah, they do the internet. I know it kind of comes in through there, but that is that is the stu that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. We can't serve <laughs> you a specific channel. You're getting 180 channels. Hey, Andrew, have you had your coffee today? <laughs> it's wine o'clock somewhere because I'm about <laughs> to whine. This is crazy. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You're getting yeah. clear cable television on 180 channels or whatever it is. 85 plus. You're trying to add. Well, that's what you're adding, right? <laughs> and now, but the the one. I think new I'm adding. Technically, work. I'm adding 60 channels. Oh, jeez. Because I was already getting 125 plus and now i'm trying to get to 185 plus but the reason this new channel that you just signed up for has not kicked in about what now we're past 48 hours at this point in your day you're kind of on day three uh yeah. you said this is like a this is like a comedy maybe it's like 12th night maybe on the 12th night you end up getting the the the, the <laughs> cable that you paid for what a ridiculous thing to say well it caught me off guard. He was like, you have too many things connected to the internet. And I started walking around doing like an accounting of like, I was like, well, this laptop, I think my phone is on the Wi-Fi. There's a Sonos. And then I was like, oh, wait, this guy is on a script trying to sell me some kind of other thing while we're oh waiting. God, I am going you know to what I mean? Explode. And I was, like, I was like, I was like, I have, uh, I go, everything seems to be working fine. I go, are you, is, are you trying to offer me some sort of package? And he says, yes, I have great news. We can, you know, we can, you can have more, you can get unlimited internet. I was like, oh, this is a sales pitch. I was like, I'm good. Thank you. Let's just get this channel working. I was like, what's the channel called? I go, it's called Root Sports. It's channel 734, which probably means nothing to him because, you know, he's somewhere far away. Um, but uh, he said, okay, uh, you know, I'm, I'm upgrading you to the first, the first thing he said was, I have, I have great news. I'm able to do this whole package for $238. And I was like, that's more than the website told me it was going to be. Usually they'll try to like, you know, give you some sort of special promotion, which locks you in to some multi-year, you know, contract. He was quoting me a number that was higher than the Xfinity website. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I was like, when I bought this on the internet like two days ago, it was cheaper. And he was like, well, let me check on that. And then he comes back with the exact price that the internet told me. <laughs> let me ask you a question. I was impressed that you got through to a human being. Did you get through to a human being by pretending like you were going to buy something? Because I've done that before. Like when you can't get customer support, you're like, well, I know I can get a human being if I punch in the numbers that say I want to buy something, send me to your sales department with the hope that then I get a human being on and then they transfer me successfully to another human being. Is is there any chance that you found yourself in the sales department or is that adding or is that bringing too much logic to this situation? You know what I did? You know how I got through? This is insane. And this is a life hack at Buddy, I think. I just put the phone on speakerphone while I was listening to All Things Considered and putting together cabinets in my kitchen. And I think that like Elsa Chang so confused the robot that it just put me through eventually because there was a voice happening in the background right that was like talking it was like hi what do we what can we help you with i'm sorry i didn't understand that i need to know what your problem the xfinity app can hit one for and it was just like this weird noise in the background that wasn't me that was some other human talking about an unrelated topic eventually melted the system down to where mm. it just said please hold and then i was talking to this guy who was asking me if i'd had my coffee today interesting interesting yeah, yeah okay 
I don't know if that would work again, but it worked in this. Basically, what happened was I put it on speakerphone. I was going to come over and try to hit the buttons and stuff, but then I got caught up putting together this particular drawer. And then I realized that it was just kind of the voice in the background was doing something to the automation that was getting me towards a human being. So I ended up talking to this person and I, it was he was like, okay, uh, you know, he comes back and then he quotes me the, the price that was on the internet, which is like all of $6 cheaper a month. But still, I was like, it's the principle of the matter. And so they already goes, have your money, I thought. You punched in your credit card three days ago. Am I wrong they about that? They have my credit card. You've already They've been paid for this. What is he trying to sell on you? On Saturday, I paid for this. Um, and so, uh, but then he was in the system somehow, I guess I hadn't, I don't know. I mean, okay. it was weird. Okay. He, apparently it didn't go through, I guess. He didn't tell me this. He just, this guy was on such like autopilot that it was, I, I couldn't get a straight answer from him. I couldn't find out if it was like what I did on Saturday didn't work. I know it worked because I went all the way, all the way through the process. You know what I mean? I put it in the cart. I clicked buy and then it generated a response that said thank you for your order we'll email you when we've approved it mm -hmm. and did the I, message on your tv change to something like go here to upgrade and then didn't the new message say something like your your new changes are in process or something yes when and that was my fatal error was that was when i hung up with him because it was a different error message on the screen, and I thought this means something has happened. Oh, so that so, that new message just happened last night. That isn't what you that were message over happened the last okay. night while I was on the phone with him. I see. Okay. And okay. I was like, "Well, this isn't this is an improvement because the television is telling me uh, basically uh, it, you don't have this channel, but it's because you just ordered it and it's taking a minute." So I was I like, see. "Okay, good. It knows, it understands that something is something's happening." So I, I took that to be a good sign, and I hung up with the guy and then spent the rest of the night not having root sports. And this morning, do not have root sports. And still as of this – and, of course, we ended yesterday's as show of, in one of the highlights of TBTL history, I think, or certainly history in the past 10 years, of you being on the phone, going into the house, turning on the yeah. TV, only to learn that you were still waiting for your service to kick in. And you're right. If you got an email confirming that the, the service was going to kick in – Everything should have been fine, but you would have, if you hadn't called and if Elsa hadn't gotten you through to a human being, you would still just be waiting and waiting and waiting, and you could have gone all summer without ever realizing that your order didn't actually get processed. But here's the thing, Andrew. I still don't have root sports. Yeah. To this it's, what is but it? you have a message that says it's coming now. Before you didn't even have that. <laughs> so that's exciting. Good for you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's, I really was going through various stages of grief last night. Um, not just because, uh, the Mariners, uh, let the, um, guardians back into the game in a way I didn't mm -hmm. see coming, but because I was like, could I, I really was thinking maybe, maybe this is a sign from the almighty to just sign up for Fubo TV. Like, can I get MSNBC on demand in some way? And can I Fubo the Mariners? <laughs> yeah, I'd like, Fubo to Fubo definitely... the, I'd like to Fubo the Mariners' ownership. I can't believe they named it Fubo TV. That must is that like Fubu TV? Is that for us know. by us? I like, know it it's sounds... very strange. And then you have and then Hulu, Pluto, and Tubi. I feel like they're all kind of going for something that just makes it very confusing for me and old when I'm looking for a program. I can't keep them straight. But Fubo sounds like a thing you would say as a way of swearing as a kid. It does. Like it's effed. Yes. It's effed over beyond Fubo. No, it's effed up beyond overstatement, yeah. which, by the way, <laughs> describes my relationship with Xfinity. I like a little kid saying Fubo, and the O stands for overstatement. It's a precocious it's a little very, kid. very, very verbose kid. <laughs> but I really was like, maybe this is a sign that I just, it's not meant to be with me and Xfinity. And I hate them so much. Like, maybe what I need to do is just rethink this whole thing, mm -hmm. figure out a way to get the, like, three products that I really want, which, are, uh, as I've stated, are is MSNBC, the Mariners, and then, I guess, during the football season, uh, the, the Seahawks games. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all that I watch. And I have 185-plus channels, which seems, like, unnecessary, or at least I would if they would give it to me. So I don't know. Maybe this is a sign that I need to just figure this out and and go around them. Even if Fubo is eighty bucks a month, that's still cheaper than 
the 220 something that I'm going to be paying whenever this kicks in. Have you looked up if MSNBC is on Fubo or available on Fubo? I'm looking this up now because I was thinking about your situation last night. If only I, we had one of their primetime anchors listening to the show. It says, yeah. Is that disrespectful Hi, for me to reach out to Chris and ask him it, <laughs> for me to reach out to Chris and go, are you guys on Fubo? Let's see here. Yes, MSNBC is available on Fubo TV. Uh, uh, Fubo what? TV is a sports centered live. So it is a sports centered live TV streamer that includes other channels like ABC, CBS, Fox and NBC. Fubo TV also includes MSNBC. It has CBS and Fox? Um, yeah, according Did this just turn into a Fubo ad? <laughs> this is a I am reading to you the sort of aggregated response by Google. Oh, great. So, yeah. So, you know, double Fubo me on this before you. Um, <laughs> First thing Google asks Fubo-ing. you now is, have you had your coffee today? Yeah, right. So anyway, you should you want to double check. But I was actually thinking about your predicament last night. So I actually mowed the lawn last night. Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize how much my soul needed that. I don't even mean the process mm. of mowing the lawn, which is another thing altogether. But I. Like over the spring, the grass had gotten so long, but I was like, yeah, but the weather is not right for mowing the lawn. And finally, yesterday it was right. And I had a really bad backache, but I'm like, I got to do this. Oh. and It'll probably make me feel better. Yeah, it's been dogging me for a couple of weeks. And like, I'm like, let me lower just go outside. Upper? Uh, lower, unfortunately, yeah. Ah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm glad I went outside because I was like laying down, just like feeling miserable. I'm like, it's sunny outside. You know how when you're uh, like not feeling well? And then it's sunny outside. It makes you feel even worse just about yeah. everything altogether. So I'm just like, just go outside, get some fresh air, mow the lawn. Maybe it'll work itself out because that's how that's how backs work usually. Go do strenuous Actually, labor. Actually, in my experience, that is how they work It is sometimes. sort of, like, yeah. If you get moving, it can yeah. kind of loosen it up. Yeah, I, I actually agree. Um, but anyway, so I come in from a pretty satisfying – I'm looking around my lawn. I'm like, I can't believe it got so bad. And now everything feels a little bit like it's more in place. And that's how I like things in life. And then I'm like, oh, time for the Mariners. So I am – about to Let's jump mow in the, the shower. things that mow. Yeah, and so I'm like, oh, I'm going to listen on the radio. So far, I've only watched the games this season, and so I'm listening on the radio, and then I'm thinking about your you know, viewing or listening experience. So I text you. I'm like, hey, I'm on the radio now. How are you? Has your channel kicked in yet? Are you watching this? And you sent me that video <laughs> telling me that you were still waiting for Fubo. Um, and anyway, you're waiting for your Root Sports to show up, and so you and I were texting a little bit, and then I'm kind of in my head about this because here's the deal. Like, I've now seen a couple of somewhat, like, close-up shots that you sent me, photos, and then that video last night of what your TV setup is in this, you know, and I, I can't I can't see the context of the whole room, but I understand, I truly understand, well, you and I are very different about some of these things, why it's not the same for you just to plug a computer into the back of your TV. You have a, a very nice TV that's on a very, you know, that's mounted on the wall, it's a minimalist space, it looks nice. For me, I'm just in my stupid rumpus room anyway, where the back of my TV is exposed, so I just have a dongle there all the time, and it's just a different situation. For me, watching on my computer is not such a big deal, but I truly understand why you say, listen, even if this company is screwing me over, even if I'm paying way too much just for the ability to watch baseball on this TV, like, it is is a different experience to not have to like hook something up every time. I totally get that. But I do feel like I have taken advantage of the smart TV aspect of our newer televisions more than you have. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking yes, like very much. So. And I was thinking like Fubo is $80. That's too much for me to sign up for just to watch $80 a month. I should say um, that's too much for me to put down just for Mariners games when we're already paying for HBO and all this other stuff. But if you were able to transfer away from cable, like Wouldn't it just be so great just to tell the Mm -hmm. cable company to go Fubo themselves and then you get (laughs) Fubo and I but I was thinking also like, yeah, but then you're you do watch MSNBC and I assume that was not on Fubo. But like, I think that your experience eventually Mm -hmm. in life is going to be without cable anyway. You're going to start using the apps on your TV more. And I think this might be this. (sighs) You do you, but I, I would encourage you to break ties with cable. It is so infuriating. I think it's the perhaps principle that I talk about so often on the program, right? Which is you just sort of never know how things are going to go. Mm-hmm. And this seems like this has been very frustrating for me, but it may end up being a real gift mm-hmm. because if it causes me to just take the like couple of hours to look at my other options and to, as they say, cut the cord and just get away from this evil corporation. Even before I got the guy on the phone yesterday, Andrew, I was so livid. I was coming back from town. I'd gone down to uh, uh, get some groceries, and I thought, well, I'll try to take advantage of this drive time back to call Xfinity. 
and it was doing that thing where you you get an automated voice and it says like um, the Xfinity assistant can help you. The assistant is obviously just like an AI program or something. And I go like human, human. It's like the Xfinity assistant can connect you with a human, but first you've got to tell us what your problem is. I was like, I'm trying to add root sports. And it goes, the Xfinity assistant can help you with that. I was like, you mother Fubo, you are never going to give me to a human. You are mm -hmm. always going to tell me that the Xfinity assistant can help me with this. Yep. It was, I mean, again, you, this is the most angry I've ever seen you or ever observed you to be is related to this company. So I'm not telling you anything, but it was just like, I was just so mad because it was such it was such a bad faith mm -hmm. automated phone conversation initially. Like it is like it's telling me about the assistant. It's telling me the assistant's going to get me to a human, but then it's just trying to tell me the assistant can actually fix it yep, for me. Yep, I had and that it's with like, another company oh. recently, and it's not. It wasn't Comcast because I've been away from them for a while now. But yeah, the same deal. It's just like, or you know what it was? It was a. It was one of those. Um, automatic chat function so it wasn't even on a phone tree it was like you know like kind of the chat function on a computer like i think it might have even mm -hmm. been for this company that we're using right now to talk to each other down the line <laughs> um and, and it, i just kept on saying what my problem was and i said oh okay i think you need this link here and i was like i don't need a link i've gone through all the links i've gone through all the links that the other links have suggested like i need a human being and then it would just say oh it sounds like you're looking for a human being what can they help you with here's this link and it was just like it was literally a loop and i was like this is designed to drive people bananas like yeah. it is it is a special kind of torture and i wanted to yell into the phone like threats mm -hmm. but i didn't want to get on some kind of no fly list yeah like i really because i i just i started to kind of lose it at some point and i just wanted to say like i, I do have you know I'm gonna one kill of the, the president is... <laughs> now you're on a list <laughs> You're just saying that to Xfinity, <laughs> thinking that's what's going to get you through. <laughs> I'm just trying to impress Jodie Foster. Anyway, like, goodbye. <laughs> but like, no, I really was. I was so I, I was so mad at one point before I ended up talking to the human that I wanted to just yell into the phone like, I want to burn your company down. Like it was getting into threats of violence. But then I was literally like. Is there a list somewhere mm -hmm. of people who've threatened physical violence to the company? Because that's not, I don't want to hurt a person, but I do want to hurt this robot I'm mm -hmm. talking to sure. yeah. real bad. And it was like, I, I understood how people, you know, end up <laughs> to some degree on some kind of government watch list because they just, it's very like uh, Michael Douglas in that movie Falling Down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like right. I just, well, you know, and I don't want to make light of people being violent, but it just was, I was, I wanted to scream into the phone that I'm going to find the corporate headquarters of Xfinity and I'm going to like do something really regrettable. But then I literally thought, are the police going to show up at my house yeah, if right. I do that? Like that would be the one thing that that Xfinity would be good at would be reporting you to the police mm -hmm. if you threaten them. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like they're bad at everything else. They're bad at giving me root sports but they are really effective at reporting me to law enforcement if I make a threat of violence. But didn't I also see some photos of you uh, in D.C. on January 6th? Like, I feel that like that is also for the put, courts to decide, put you Andrew. On some lists as well. Somebody who looked just like you. It might have been that or the guy with the little birds from Game of Thrones. It was the guy it from Bob's bears. Burgers. <laughs> wait, which? Wait, the guy who's sitting. Oh, because of the hat. The One of the guys the from counter. Bob's Burgers was there. You know that, oh, right? Oh, oh, the Mister Show Jake, guy. What's the, the Mister Show guy? Right, right, right. Um, uh, I, Jake, yeah, and he's uh, he's no, the across the Jake, street yeah. uh, business owner in Bob's. Yeah, he right, was right. Yeah, in, yes, exactly. in Bob's Burgers. I thought we were talking about guys on Bob's Burgers who look like you, and I almost went into some dangerous territory with that assumption. Oh no, we are going to say Teddy. I do have a hat on like Well, him that's today, why I thought you were way. making a joke because you were wearing a, you're wearing a beanie cap and I thought maybe Here's you meant like your teddy at the Let counter. Let me explain this hat to you, Andrew, mm -hmm. here on this on the 2nd of April in the year of our Lord 2024. What happened was I and I I didn't plan my morning particularly well. I was doing my little jog right before the show and I didn't get uh, a chance to quaff my hair. And so right when the show, when the intro music was playing, I was looking around for something to put on because I felt like my hair looked a little goofy, but I didn't have a, a proper baseball. I didn't have my The Burbs hat in here. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed this uh, like beanie that's from the South End Rowing Club in San Francisco, which is the place where I did that cold water swim. And it is admittedly a very weird look on a spring day. Um, oh, I don't think it's a weird look. I just I, I got, think it's I got weird. caught up. I don't up really in a like joke. this look on me. I'll be honest with you. 
I introduced the idea of January 6th. I don't know what I was going for there. That wasn't even really a joke. I was I was sort of thinking like of all the people who should should be on watch lists but aren't, and then you're on a watch list. So then I started thinking about the insurrection. And I'm like, I think there's a joke here somewhere. So I just threw out the word. <laughs> it was just it was just patriots wanting to be heard. Yeah. Um, and I I really am gonna end up on a list after this one. But uh, anyway, yeah. So I just regret the whole thing, and then I'm feeling nervous. We're talking about Bob's Burgers. I'm saying that you look like Teddy which is not the case, although I have seen you order two sandwiches before, not unlike Teddy. <laughs> it's Jay Johnson, by the way, is the actor we're trying That's to That's the name of, of the guy yeah. that was at, allegedly at January 6th, or has that been proved yet? I no, wonder. I think there are photos of him there, yeah, but that's as deep as I'll go into that because I don't want to spread uh, misinformation. But anyway, so as of this morning, you woke up and you still have the kind of I guess, quote unquote, new message on your TV that says, yeah. oh, yeah, there have been some changes to your to your account, but we're waiting for them <laughs> to, to, uh, kick ki- in. to kick Which in, which is also just like, I mean, this is uh, we're living in the digital age. This should yeah. not be something. Does somebody have to go like print out a form and fax it somewhere? Mm-hmm. Like maybe this is also a little bit affected by just kind of my, uh, you know, instant gratification impulses and just the way that we live. But it just seems like this is something that should take zero seconds once it's Mm -hmm. been, once they're accepting my money, once the the guy, uh, wherever he was, you know, clicks and, you know, fills out some like, like online form for me in my account, it should just take no time. Like what is happening between last night when the guy said, okay, you're good to Mm -hmm. go. And whenever this thing kicks in like digitally what's happening is there a chance and i i hate to say this because i don't even want to make excuses for them but is there a chance that you have too many devices on the same wi-fi <laughs> network because i understand that's one that of that the leading really affect, theories currently i can't even believe that that's where they started with this conversation like how can you're calling about a different issue and and this person is claiming that is almost like he wasn't even troubleshooting behavior. though he no 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 he was just on his we had downtime oh okay and after he had asked me about my coffee for the day uh-huh. he was then moving on to the next part of his script which was we want to sell this guy faster internet or we want to sell this guy unlimited internet and so the script says, hey, um, you, do you, you have too many devices connected to the internet. That's why your devices are slow. We can make it faster by giving you unlimited internet. It was just a sales pitch. Yeah, it was, it was just the cool. next thing on his list. He also, at the end, was like, hey, I have a, a great news. I have a promotion where you can get a free device. And I was like, thank you. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Like whatever BS Comcast tablet you're going to send me that I have to pay off over the... <laughs> amortized over the next three years no thank you no, like thank you. whatever free device you're offering me i don't want it yeah what device would you possibly want from comcast it's like their <laughs> version of a kindle or whatever it's an abacus <laughs> yeah where you can keep track of how much money they're taking from you every month it's they say it's a kindle but it's an etch-a-sketch in reality Right? Seriously. You have too many Etch-A-Sketches yeah. hooked up right now <laughs> to your Comcast network. account, sir. Oh, my God. Absolutely so. infuriating. And like, but yeah, it's I'm interested been great to see, content like, for the show. So I mean, I don't know about least. that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I am interested in seeing. So, OK, let's let's just end here with a little bit of math or maths, as they say in Europe. Um, uh-huh. Let me get my abacus up. You, what is your total... Com, uh, it's a little bit tough because they're your internet provider as well. I understand that, but how much do you think you're actually paying for your cable service now? Uh, I think the cable it? part of it is like a hundred and something bucks because okay. the total bill is going to be like two hundred and twenty-seven dollars a month or something. Now this is where things become a real pain in the keister, and so I don't know if you're going to feel like dealing with all this, especially as you, you're in a situation where you're getting more and more settled into your house. I could see you not wanting mm-hmm. to like kind of reverse course too much, but like when we dropped our cable, we said, well, we don't want to get our internet through Comcast either because Comcast, because they provide so many things, they want to bundle everything, and that's why I was yes. paying for. They a- want to do my cell phone now. I they want to do your taxes. They want. Wanted, like, Actually, they, I could use some help with that. We paid for a landline for probably at least five years across a couple of different apartments. We didn't even have a phone plugged into it, but they had me convinced mm-hmm. that, well, if you bundle this and this and they make it, uh-huh. they make the math or maths so confusing mm-hmm. that, like, if you're going to cut the cord, you know, we pay 
we had an introductory rate, but now it's like $75 a month for internet and that's it. And it's the fastest internet I've ever had in my life. And it's through a different provider now. And we have no relationship with Comcast. You must have the exact right number of devices hooked up. I do. I have, and it, you know what it is? And it's a thousand. I was actually thinking about that. Like there was a time when, I, I mentioned this to Vives not all that long ago, that like, there was a time when if we did have too many devices, we as a society or we as a household had too many devices plugged in, you would get lag. And it kind of occurred to me the other day. I'm like, wow, Vives, like you you're watching TV upstairs. I'm watching TV downstairs. I'm probably also listening to a podcast, you know, whatever. But like we never even think about that anymore. And we don't have cable. It's all just like smart devices that are streaming. And so like basically what I'm saying here is if you totally cut ties with Comcast and then got Fubo on top of it, that could be not just a money saver, but also a pretty smooth experience. And you can tell them to go Fubo themselves. But that right. does mean probably, you know, having another cable provider come to your house, drill a hole in your wall or whatever they're going to do. Because we have, um, which I'm going to call it, the one that's super fast now. It's like, what's the word? Fiber. For Fiber. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. It's a good way to go. But I completely understand if you're just like, I don't want to untangle everything that I've tangled up. Well, here's the... <laughs> here's. Here's the uh, sort of sleeper cell in this whole thing, Andrew, that I realized yesterday when I was making that video for you. I can't really see the TV very well in the afternoon because there's so much sunlight coming in. Oh, okay, this is a new <laughs> twist. Yeah. Like, all, I mean, this whole project of this house has been because it you know, has this cool view of the river and I want to have my moment of sitting and staring and all that. Um, it's been, the project has been, and it's been many, many thousands of dollars and, and m m much, much work has gone into making it just basically a one side of the house, kind of a big glass front. And, uh, that's all well and good, except for, it turns out that lets in a lot mm -hmm. of sunlight, which was the goal, but it means the TV, <laughs> the current placement of the TV is, it's, it's not really watchable in, in the, mm -hmm. you know, but from six to like eight, whenever sunset is uh, between, you know, the, the late afternoon and when the sun sets, it's actually not great for television watching, which is maybe the most ironic thing ever. I don't think many baseball games are played between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. here on the West it's Coast. Not, it's not a, 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 a common time for the, for no, the sport. No, not at all. I know. I mean, that was yesterday as I was like staring at the TV screen and, you know, sort of plotting the demise of the Xfinity company. I was also noting the fact that even when it gets working, I'm going to have to figure some stuff out because... <laughs> It's not ideal currently. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's ideal for staring at the river. It's not ideal for watching baseball. Point is, I might just be listening on the radio this whole season, and maybe that's not yeah. a bad thing as well. Fubo, listening on the radio, uh, doing projects around the house. Maybe I just need to rethink this whole thing. Maybe. I, I still have been. Yesterday when I, I tried to watch the game, I was listening to part of it, as I mentioned, and then um, I wanted to switch over to like watching a stream, one of these, um, you know, l let's say unpromoted streams. I'm always looking for the right <laughs> word for that because I don't unpromoted? know. Like, illegal makes it sound like you're breaking the law, which is I feel like you're breaking Major League Baseball rules, but whatever. Um, but what, what I was trying to dial up one of those streams and I was having a lot of trouble finding one that would stay steady for the entire mm. game. I find Finally found one, but there was so much messing around, and this has not been the experience like the past several games. Yesterday was just a bad day for some reason, and I started to wonder, oh, I do believe that at times the industry does find, does sort of root out these streams and tamp them down, mm -hmm. and I wondered if that was going on yesterday as I'm like sort of, I'm, I'm crouched over my computer, which is plugged in behind my TV. I'm sitting on a tiny little chair. I got the radio on because I don't want to miss any of the action, but the radio is mm -hmm. about two minutes ahead of the game that I'm trying to get a stable stream for, and I'm just like, this is not working, and I was like, maybe, maybe I, you know, again, I mentioned this on yesterday's show, maybe we're just baseball listeners from now on. I'm not sure exactly. Exactly. I'm not exactly sure what that looks like. It would probably be better for me because it would mean that my life as I know it can continue on and my life with Becca can, you know, like it's it's you're less attached to it when it's on the radio than you are when it's on the television. Mm -hmm. You know, you can drive places, you can kind of like it just it means that you're not spending, you know, 
what's like four times 162 yeah, right. that many hours just plopped on the couch watching the game like it's it's a better system honestly to just like make peace with listening to it yeah no i mean i, I love i again i listen to probably more games than i watch um on a u during a usual season but like but that's because i choose to because i'm mowing the lawn or i'm puttering or i'm doing whatever mm -hmm. i don't like the idea of not having the ability to watch it all but i do feel like something's got to give eventually something has got to give and i don't know i mean maybe we all just rise up oh hey we were just talking about uprisings <laughs> january 8th <laughs> it's a it's when it's when the it's consumers when, rise up against the. that's right exactly it's it's uh when we the uh the people who want to watch baseball for a reasonable reasonable price when we finally um you know make our voices heard um uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all next year for that. In the meantime, hey, we should thank some dazzling donors. And then I want to talk to you about these are we don't talk about Kim Kardashian a lot on the program, but I would like to talk about two people who could not be. Well, that's not true. I was going to say could not be more sort of diametrically opposed, but I don't know if they are. Kim Kardashian is actually fairly designy at this point, but I didn't think I would be saying the names Kim Kardashian and Donald Judd in the same sentence. And uh, I will say those names in the same sentence right after we thank some dazzling donors. We was hoping for some razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. That's right, man. Razzle dazzle. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Now ready. Ready. Go. Everybody razzle. All right, let's thank those dazzling donors. These are the wonderful, generous people keeping TBTL in business with their donation of a dazzling amount of dough. Of course, we're talking about Joe McIntyre of Atlanta, Georgia. Are you sure it's not pronounced, pronounced Joe Nicodib? Oh, <laughs> NKOTB. Oh, that was a little Do you know what NKOTB you. is? It did take me a second, but I realized that it's so Joe McIntyre, and then the pronouncer is pronounced just like NKOTB. And I did look at that at first. I'm like, Nicobda. And then I'm like, oh, new kids <laughs> on the block. Joey McIntyre, I think, was, well, I went back and forth between thinking Joey McIntyre and also Jordan Knight. Those were the two hottest NKOTB guys to me. Why I was tracking this as a as a tween, I don't know, but I was. Well, it, it sound, didn't you mention recently that you were sort of inspired by one of them in a fashion Yeah, sense? for I wanted a haircut that looked like Jordan Knight. It went that's very, the, very that's wrong. That's where the heart came in, the heart shape. That's where the, the I know yeah. you like, nice. skin heart came in. Nice. Um, but I, I think Joey McIntyre was 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 kind of the dream boat mm. of, of that crew. And I assume our Joe McIntyre is also the dream yeah. boat of Atlanta, Georgia. Sweet. Joe says, uh, I'll always be a amazed by how much the show and the contributions of the listeners lift my spirits could also be as my wife pointed out recently that tbtl is the only thing i listen to read or watch that isn't grim oh. uh that's not it though the show is <laughs> i'm just thinking about all the jokes i made at the beginning of today's show that were possibly oh, hey, by the way we grim. still we need to um, also uh, check in on your garbage situation oh yeah time. that's a, i think that can be uh, a quickie okay uh, it, it's not that though. The show is genuinely great on a daily basis. If I ever have time, I'm going to create a taxonomy of Andrew's noises and pauses and the varying degrees of alarm and concern that they express as Luke calmly tells a story about doing something in the most normal way available to him. That's a thing. I didn't realize that that's a thing. Did you know that that's a thing? I did. Do I overexpress concern when you're talking about boring stuff? I just think it's this is a very interestingly, interestingly constructed sentence. Luke calmly tells a story about doing something in the most normal way available to him. In other words, hmm, I'm using great. the language available to me, I think, is what the is what that means. I think what the takeaway here is you're just telling a normal story, uh, doing something nor talking about doing something normal in a normal way. But I'm making degrees. I'm, I'm making sounds that show alarm and concern probably when they're not needed, which I'm going to lean into now. I didn't know Absolutely. I did that, yeah, if it's but got it Joe, If it's fun. got Joe donating, I would say don't stop. <gasps> like that? <laughs> I forgot what the bit was. I was like, what happened? <laughs> I also can't see you because I currently have the Dazzling Donor script uh -huh. in front of me, so I don't know what, what expressions you're making, but I do know 
that Joe says, a TBTL has been the soundtrack to my terrifying bike commute through Ooh. Atlanta for almost a decade, mm. and to a whole host of transmissions that I probably should have been focusing on instead of trying to picture Luke's home improvement projects or Andrew's reasonable worries about putting a grill on the rooftop, quote, deck. Thank you, Joe. I will send this to Genevieve. I, I often describe the show to people, and I always say that a uh, true measure of y'all and the tens is that I've never been bored. Wow. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, that's the, that means a lot. That's um, like the nicest thing anybody's ever said about that the show. That is really nice. Yeah, thank you. I'm using the uh, language available to me to say thank you, <laughs> Joe. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and good luck and uh, stay safe out there on that bike commute. Yes. That can be hairy. Maestro? On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Now ready. Ready. Go. Everybody ready. We've also got to thank Sarah Woodruff of Silver Spring, Maryland. I used to go out to Silver Spring, Maryland mm. when I lived in D.C. For reporting or for hanging? No, just for hanging. It's mm -hmm. a cool town, and I think you can get there on the um, D.C. metro. Nice. There's a Silver Spring stop. Sarah says, Sarah with an H is the biblical post-covenant spelling, which is both true and the bad joke I have made before completing huh. this form. Do with that what you will. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that the H has anything to do with a biblical post-covenant spelling. My sister Sarah is with an H as well. Does that, it sounds like I'm making another bad joke here, but I'm a little confused by what that means. That's not the part that sounds like the bad joke, but does that, does that um, presuppose that there is a Sarah without an H that is? There is. A, and, I mean, I know that there is. A. No. <laughs> No, I know that it exists in modern society, but okay. it, uh, is Sarah saying that there's actually an earlier, like the the H was actually added later? I think of Sarah without an H as being a more modern convention, and this yeah. says, the, so this is saying that Sarah with an H is actually more modern than Sarah without an H? It, it looks like that. Wow. Sarah with an H is the biblical post-covenant. It's got post in it. It does. Post-covenant spelling. Okay, so. interesting. Sarah says, greetings to Luke Andrew and all the tens. I feel incredibly lucky to once again be in the financial position to be a dazzling donor. Thank you. I've previously used this opportunity to highlight such lighthearted topics as grief and medical care and exercise. So I'll stay on brand and talk about transitions. Uh, with a, within a one-month period in 2023, I left my job of nearly 20 years to start a new one, and my long-term partner came out as a trans woman. Uh, this was on top of there being major griefs, complications with our various kids, and just the chaos of life in general. The job change has made a huge difference, and I both love the team with which I work and the nature of the work that I'm doing. Nice. My partner is pursuing all of the changes, personal, legal, medical, that are allowing her to become fully who she is. So I want to ask the tens, what change do you need to make for yourself? Uh, how can you show up for yourself just as this pod cart shows up for all of us? You can do this, semicolon, I believe in you, exclamation point, from Sarah with an H. We can start with the small stuff. I'm being honest here. A change, like when I think about that question, what is a change you need to make for yourself? And this, I, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm making light of this or I'm being pat. I'm actually being quite serious because yeah. I have so many relatively small things in my life that if I were to make a change on them, it would make a huge, huge difference. And mm. literally, one of them has already sort of been addressed today. I've been dealing with a bad back that's been dogging me for like about a week now, and I think part of that is stress related. It just kind of goes out from time to time. But you know what doesn't help? Me sitting in a chair for a couple of hours every day talking to you, a chair that is not built for a desk like this, and me mm. now twisting to look into the camera and talk to you, but then oh. also twisting to look at this. And I was just talking to Genevieve about it yesterday. I'm just like, for years now I've had bad backs and I know that I need a new desk chair like I and again I, this sounds so pat but I but I hope that Sarah understands that I mean this and like there's so many things in life that if I just took a little bit of effort could have a huge impact and I'm not making those changes for myself yeah you know Andrew I, I'm also not trying to be glib or joking but I think in all seriousness, I think you need to uh, be nice to yourself, and also you need to, um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, basically take care of yourself, because I feel like you kind of 
you take care of a lot of other people, you take care of the show, you take care of me sort of by extension, but, but you should be, you should, you deserve to sit in a chair that doesn't hurt your back. Well, the reason (laughs) I don't do it is, is out of laziness. It's not out of like some sort of Mm -hmm. hair shirt mentality. I don't think it's just like, I don't know. Like the chairs that are comfortable don't look good. Not that this is some especially good looking chair. And then it's just like, I don't know, unless Genevieve buys it for me and forces it on (laughs) me. I'm just like a child. Okay. You are a bad person. I am a bad person is what I've saying but anyway i hope i didn't make light of what sarah is saying because i, don't I, think, I so. think i'm i think you know in small ways and in large ways we can all kind of look at like what changes are we not like kind of going for that we should yeah and this is a big day of change for me too because it's the day i learned i'm signing up for fubo tv that's right oh my god so. if you um and this is the day i wear i start wearing a ski cap on the show if you end up um canceling your xfinity you need to just document like every every emotion you have during the process like do you get some Somebody on the phone. You can. Pr- it probably makes more I sense mean, to cancel online. But wouldn't you like to tell? Do you have Mister and Mrs. Xfinity's phone number? I assume they run the company. Can you call them? Directly? I was. I'm. I. Uh, we don't need to get bogged back down in this. But like, <laughs> yesterday, when I was just in my like the absolute throes of my anger, I was like, "Is there a guy sitting at a desk somewhere who is Mister Xfinity?" Mm-hmm. And I imagined him to be like the bad guy from Inspector Gadget. Mm-hmm. The claw, you never see his face. He's just petting a cat, if I remember right. Yep. Yep. Like, I was like, that guy is running Xfinity, and I need to find him, and I need to make him sad. I mean, I need to make him feel the sadness that I'm currently feeling by not because I can't watch Root Sports. Yeah, I mean, honestly, and so like it's all like Comcast, aren't they tied up with NBC now and stuff too? Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting that confused. Oh, uh, that's Cable get... Town. <laughs> that's that's GE and Cable Town, I believe. Anyway, yeah, but you do know that as we go through all of this stuff, there are people who are running these companies who are just so fabulously wealthy beyond beyond well, human that was comprehension. A, again, that was. This whole like thing I was going through in my mind yesterday as I was as the robot was like, you know, telling me like, I'll help you with that. And then it was like, I want to talk to a human. OK, I'll get you to human. But first, I need to know what you're dealing with. Like as that was happening, I was like, somebody decided that this would be how this goes. Mm-hmm. And somebody sat in a boardroom, somebody who is themselves fabulously well compensated. And they work for a company whose shareholders are fabulously well compensated, decided that it was worth the money they would save on having a, a, 10 more human beings work there on the phones or 50 more human beings. It would be worth it because I wouldn't have a different option. And in my anger, like they calculated at, like how angry I could get before I would stop being a customer. Yeah. And mostly they were right with the calculation. <laughs> But yeah. maybe not today, Sarah with an H. Yes. Today things change. But like, you know what I mean? Like they, I was just, I, I was so mad because I felt like you knew this was going to happen to me and people like me. And you decided it was worth the, my anger because you knew that like a certain percentage of us would just stick with this stupid system because it's too much of a hassle to switch. And you did the calculation. You decided make Luke's life worse because it puts more money in my pocket. Like that's what somebody decided. And I was at the kind of sort of business end of that decision yesterday. I, I, I don't want to continue to sully Sarah's dazzling donor message with our gripes, but I just discovered something somewhat funny. So I was thinking, I wonder if Fubo is also just a <laughs> subsidiary of the same company. You know what I mean? Oh, the, that would the be thing that drives hilarious. me bananas is the lack of choice here. You know, like we're uh-huh. just we're up against the wall. So I looked up who owns. It's just Fubo. a different flavor of Comcast, right? But it it, it does seem to be a different ownership group. <laughs> what I'm laughing at, and I don't even know if this is actually funny or if i'm just still reeling from those dreams i had face bank (laughs) it sounds like something it sounds like a jack who are you face banking (laughs) yes it sounds like a jack donaghy joke it's capital a f c e no space capital b a n k face bank you know just one of those innocent companies that has a bank of faces What are we doing? Uh, can we go? Uh, I mean, I know this is not a real option Between for me. Between Facebank but... and Bite Dance, we don't stand a flipping chance. We got to move out to the woods, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm out here, man. I just want to watch the Mariners in the woods and be left alone. Anyway, thanks to Sarah yeah. and Joe for sponsoring the program today. Hello and welcome to Top Story. 
Uh, this is a story that is a sort of uh, quite designed for me, Andrew, because I'm designed. I'm not that obsessed with Kim Kardashian, but I am very obsessed with this guy named Donald Judd, who is an artist who's kind of, I mean, he's passed, but he was sort of credited with creating the art culture in Marfa, Texas, a place that I love. And, um, and he, he moved out there in, I want to say like the 1950s. And uh, it was, the land was cheap. The, 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 I think Marfa, Texas had been, there had been a military, some sort of military presence there. And then they had moved on. So there was all these buildings and things that were just kind of sitting there. And the story goes that he was, this guy Donald Judd was like passing through on a train and he saw this town and he thought, oh, I can set up my art. And he was like based in New York at the time. And uh, he set up his kind of art thing there in the sort of middle of nowhere. And over time, he developed this found, this like, kind of place called Shinadi, um, which is this kind of art colony. And then other people came out there. And now there's a Prada store outside of town. So it all worked out. Um, That's not but, a real uh, Prada store, though, right? Or is it? No, it's no, not. No, no, it's no. just like a photo op. Yeah. It's, it's actually, I think it's, I don't even know if Prada is involved. I think it's an art installation. Mm -hmm. We passed that. Um, I mean, maybe you, have you gone and visited it since? But I remember the first time you and I saw that together at the side of the, yeah. the RV. As window, we were on our way to the tumbleweed rv park yeah i think I so yeah. the coolest rv park i've probably ever been to that's cool um and so this guy donald judd is um addy and i have done the like tour of the judd foundation and it's kind of funny to me because the person who took us on the tour basically if you get the tour of this place what you find out is this guy donald judd was seems like he was kind of a nightmare <laughs> Like the person leading the tour said he made these chairs that were so uncomfortable looking. Speaking of uncomfortable chairs, Andrew, yeah. don't buy anything from the Judd Foundation. Okay? <laughs> the person said that Donald Judd was her, like, like these chairs are like plywood and very, they don't look comfortable at all. And apparently he said to his children, like a chair shouldn't be comfortable because then you'll want to sit in it too much. <laughs> Like just the most like withholding <laughs> asshole thing you could. That's like he you. designed an uncomfortable chair for his children so they wouldn't sit in it because then he thought they'd be more active. That sounds like a Craig Benson move. Now you're going to ask who that is. He was a very short-lived governor of New Hampshire who wanted to institute the standing meetings in like the mid 2000s so that you didn't get too comfortable uh -huh. meetings. He was like a champion uh -huh. of standing meetings. I think his name was Craig Benson. And I just wanted to throw that out there for our Craig T. Benson, <laughs> aka Coach. <laughs> Wait, oh shoot, no, is that Craig Coach's... T. Nelson? Okay, no, no, yeah, that's okay. Craig I Nelson. think I mean if I pulled a real Craig Benson reference there, I'm proud of myself, even if nobody you else be. is. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, this guy Donald Judd, like what the takeaway from the tour is that he was a really not a nice person. <laughs> and I, I have to say, I haven't met his offspring either, but they also seem kind of intense. His mm. daughter is named Rainier Judd, and they're very mad. The foundation is very mad at Kim Kardashian because she was doing some kind of a like video tour of the offices of I think it's Skims which is, I believe, her clothing line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if the Skims brand is specific to just, like, shapewear or if it's everything. But, um, and it it's doesn't one have of the... vowels. Am I right about that? I don't have it in front of me right now. Is it, like, SKMS or something like that? I think so. That sounds, okay. that sounds right. So I think Kim Kardashian was doing a tour of, like, the Skims offices, and she there's this big plywood ass table with these uncomfortable ass looking chairs and she's like this donald judd table is just amazing everyone comes in here and has lunch and i'm like clearly you didn't take the tour or you would have known that these chairs are designed for discomfort but she said that in this video and the judd foundation who by the way emails me every week it's like thirsty much judd foundation i took one tour i bought one baseball cap leave me alone what are they uh, th what are they trying to sell they're not trying to sell you actual design they're furniture. trying to engage i don't know i got on some you know emailing list but it's if you've taken if you've taken the tour it's such a austere kind of thing you know it's a lot of like giant rooms with like a chair an mm -hmm. uncomfortable chair sitting in them you know what i mean it's a very austere project yeah and then the fact that they're just like hitting me with these emails, it's like, yeah, mm, this is a little thirsty. Yeah, this exactly. is Donald Judd would not have approved of this. My you friends. walk into one of these rooms, and there's nothing in there except for a flat screen TV playing Root Sports. <laughs> <laughs> have you had your coffee today? <laughs> yeah, it's a rerun of a Kraken game from a year ago. <laughs> 
It's a, it's some kind of like three hours of Jen Mueller asking <laughs> Bryce Miller what his first car was. P- Piper, what's it? Piper Pepper? Piper Piper Shaw? <laughs> Piper Shaw is interviewing it's, a hockey player. It's Piper Shaw asking <laughs> Kraken what their go-to <laughs> dipping sauce is. Welcome to the Judd Foundation. That's worth two hundred and twenty-two dollars a month to get to the bottom of what these crackers are yeah. dipping their their nugs, nugs in. in. Yeah. Anyway, so the Judd Foundation was so mad about the Kim Kardashian calling this table a a Judd uh, table because it wasn't. She bought it from some you know company, I think in Los Angeles or whatever, some furniture company that like. Apparently, somebody at Skims, like, so the Judd Foundation saw this video. They were very mad about it. They said, this is not a Judd table. The Judd, these tables go for $90,000. I think there's, like, the story says, like, three of them have been sold, which sounds high to me Mm -hmm. for (laughs) $90,000. Some uncomfortable plywood-ass table. But but so they uh, immediately hit up the, um, like, Skims or Kim Kardashian's whatever team and said, uh, this is not a, uh, a Judd table. How dare you? And I was actually, I have to say, it seems like the Kardashian people handled it pretty well. They said, oh, we're really sorry. We'll take down the video. And by the way, would you like us to have Kim do a video promoting the Judd Foundation? Oh, I didn't know that last part. Yeah. I just heard that they took the video down. And the Judd Foundation was like, no. They don't want to, they're, they're snobby. They don't want to be associated they're so with her brand. They're so snobby. Mm-hmm. Like, dudes, are you daft? Take the yeah. Kim Kardashian, like, stop emailing me <laughs> and accept the Kim Kardashian promotion of your thing. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, that's an interesting thing, because like you said, and I, I don't follow any of this stuff all that closely. I had read this when I saw that it was coming up in the show. Um, and I wasn't sure what your take was going to be on it, because it sort of gets... It sort of gets into this conversation that you and I, and I'll, I'll say myself, I fumble around it because I don't know how exactly to feel. But when like an artist makes something that has an impact on the culture or is just even just beautiful um, in its own right, and then that influences other people to to make that, whether you're talking about music, whether you're talking about, sometimes we get into the kind of conversations about the value of art at auction, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's just a, a painting or a Banksy or whatever it is, like what are these values? Where does the value derived from like it's kind of a hard thing to kind of wrap your mind around and I know that design is really important to you and in a certain way if somebody is saying hey listen I have this piece of art by an artist and it's completely not by an- <laughs> that person it's just like somebody who says like hey I have this Picasso but it was actually somebody just like who recreated exactly a Picasso but it's not by Picasso obviously mm-hmm. it doesn't have the same value and you can't just say hey this is a Picasso and it sort of sounds like in this original video Kim Kardashian is saying this is a Judd table and chairs and it wasn't so I guess you're like okay can't go around saying something is by somebody when it's really not. But on the other hand, it's a table and chairs, and there's something like so fundamental and practical about that that at a certain point, especially once the artists themselves have passed on, but you have like a foundation or just like, you know, heirs or whatever it might be, trying to hang on so desperately to this idea of like, well, you can't besmirch our name. You yeah. can't you can't make an uncomfortable table. We own that uncomfortable table. It's kinda of like, yeah, but at the end of the day it's a table. Like people should be able to make these things. So it's a little bit it's a little bit complicated, but honestly, what you just said about like the Kardashian, like whatever the the Kardashian <laughs> um <laughs> what would you even call it? The the industry around the Kardashians or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the um, Kardashian industrial complex. <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you for saving me there. Yes. Saying, oh, shoot. Yeah, well, first of all, we're going to take that down. And also, sounds like you guys are doing great stuff. Let's shine a light on that and like maybe help you raise money and spread the word of your father's work. Like that is that's irritating. The Judd Foundation wanted the video deleted, the furniture, quote, recycled, i.e. destroyed and Kardashian to issue a public statement (laughs) like this feels very on brand for this Judd Foundation. Like. The table needs to be destroyed. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, by the way, this article uh, in the uh, New York Times was written by Zachary Small. Uh, They say in this uh, piece, um, 
Before dying in 1994, Judd fiercely protected the authenticity of his creations. In 1990, he criticized Giuseppe Panza, an Italian art collector who created some sculptures based on the artist's drawings, but without his direct involvement in some cases. Writing after the Solomon Guggenheim Museum acquired the works, Judd said the collector had botched his designs with inferior materials. Panza doesn't care, he wrote. What I require is too expensive. Consequently, Panza makes mock-ups, comma, mm. fakes. Yep. It's just like, I mean, calm down, guys. Like, again, this for me is very personal because I do very much love Marfa, and I very much love the idea of this place, Shinadi. And I do think that the Donald Judd stuff is kind of cool in a way, but it's personal to me because it's like they email me all the time with bullshit. And like you're trying to get attention. You're trying to engage with mm -hmm. me. You just had a chance to have like arguably one of the most famous people on planet Earth. They're suing Kim Kardashian, by the way, over this. Like this is not like this is going to court is why it's in the New York Times. Like I just it just feels like a missed opportunity to get one of the most famous people on planet Earth to promote your thing, um, which is uh, clearly what they're hoping for. Otherwise, why are they emailing me all the time? Honestly, the most beautiful part of this story that I never saw coming was that Donald Judd is cluttering up your email box. Like, that is just <laughs> so I wonderful. blame Rainier Judd. It, it is sublime. I mean, I, I honestly, like, you know, hurt people hurt people, right? Like, I feel like Rainier Judd was just never allowed to sit in a comfortable chair. No. <laughs> and so she's, like, she's taking it out on Kim Kardashian, sure. and I just don't feel like this is... This is necessary. Here I go once again with the email. Every week, I hope that it's from a female. Oh, man. It's not from a female. Feels like forever since we've done a proper email segment. Um, do you have any emails or emails? Well, don't forget, we did take a call on yesterday's show. We it was did from you. <laughs> but yes. we did take a call, so that's yes, pretty that exciting. Yes, that is true. That's how it's neat, by the way. 206 tbtl That's true. 206-414-8285, I think. Um, so this harkens back a ways, but I wanted to share with you several reactions we got to a topic we were talking about, which, of course, is a topic that would get reactions, which is the topic of tipping. Specifically, mm. now, this is going to branch out. Did you see that Seattle different... Times article, that Gene Bulk project recently? No, I'm trying to think if I saw the headline or not. What was? Oh, what what do satellites tip on and what do they not tip on? Was that? Yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to remember if I cracked that. It was like the day was after we'd had there? a tipping conversation, so I didn't yeah. send it to you because I felt like we'd already done it. But it was pretty interesting, actually. And I, you know, what? I I feel like I looked at the chart or something in there, like because it, it got mm -hmm. into like appliance tipping, like appliance delivery too, right? Like, and it, like people that was one of the lower categories, or am I misremembering that? That might have been on there. I think I think what I was noting was the high end, which is um i think baristas mm. get tipped most frequently along with like hairstylists mm. but interestingly the older people who are the who tend to tip more actually tip baristas less than young people who tend to tip less but they tip baristas more if that makes oh, sense oh interesting yeah that's yeah that is an interesting cultural phenomenon there but um so let's talk about this a little bit because there was one specific thing that i asked people to weigh in on which is something I hear a lot of people these days complaining about, and I've only encountered in very, like, maybe one or two instances, which is you are prompted, usually electronically in some way, to tip on something that seems like this is not a tippable service. The example that I gave was, like, this sort of beer shop slash quickie mart that has a little bar in the back of it mm -hmm. kind of in my neighborhood and I'll go in there and buy literally like a pack of incense and a six pack and then the device automatically asks me like what would you like to tip but there's a none button right there I don't have to like kind of like jump through hoops and I think that's because there's a bar in the back and so those people tip and it's the same system as you said mm -hmm. the POS system which I don't think I'd heard of that before you mentioned that's my it. new nickname for <laughs> Comcast by the way <laughs> yeah the POS system yeah um, and uh, so anyway uh, so so that was the only example where I just hit no on something. No, I'm not going to tip because I'm just buying a six pack here to take home. I wasn't served. But that doesn't cause me any kind of guilt or agita. That just sort of seems like we all know what's going on here. Whereas maybe some other people do stop in that same exact store and say, I guess I should tip for this loaf of bread. So I wanted to know what are some other experiences people have had where they're asked to tip on something that really does not seem like a tipping Tippable. situation. Becky and Shoreline, I have a few of these. Becky and Shoreline says, I just donated to a, I donated to a GoFundMe 
and it included a tip for helping their website to keep going or something like that. I unchecked the box real quick. Anyway, love the show. Yeah, like a mm. tip. And in that case, you're not even tipping the person. You're like kind of tossing a little extra money to the company that allows people to raise money for their causes. I wouldn't mm -hmm. tip a company. You tip a person, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's um, I, I would I would be unlikely to uh, to do that as well. Although I did get an email today and I didn't even open it. I deleted it because I knew they were just asking for more money. But I got a very flattering email from Wikipedia today. I don't know if it was mm -hmm. Jimmy Wales himself or just Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And they said, you are one of the unusual people who are one of the rare people who donate to Wikipedia. Because every now and then I throw literally $5 their way or I had in the past or something. Um, when the the more of the screen that's taken up by the appeal yeah. when eventually <laughs> exactly. it's 90% the appeal i'll just i will i've also kicked them a little money here and there Seems yeah. like a worthy cause. It does, and, and uh, it's a non and, and now they, whatever. yeah, they're really giving me the Donald Judd treatment now. <laughs> so anyway, um, there's that one. So do you tip the GoFundMe okay. website? No. no. Alan wrote in to say in, uh, let's see, it was about a year ago at the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno. And on the lobby floor, there's a small convenience grab-and-go type of store. You grab everything yourself, and you pay using self-checkout. During the self-checkout, there's a prompt for a tip. Who am what? I tipping? <laughs> Zero humans help me. You could argue that, well, they have this uh, POS machine. <laughs> the Xfinity Assistant time. is who yes. you're tipping. Um, somebody set up uh, this thing to ask for tips because the casino, bars, restaurants, POS terminals. But I wonder how many drunk people have actually tipped 25% to no one in particular after grabbing some Doritos from the casino grab-and-go. Mm. Um, and then Jenny in Chicago says, I just listened to your tipping discussion. The weirdest tip request I received was uh, I was buying postage stamps online. <laughs> at the USPS and there was a tip prompt at the end what? for a web store for a government agency who gets the tip anyway I declined that is so weird that is very weird isn't it I wonder where you that money that would up. go if you were yeah. to I mean I think you know people postal workers certainly deserve a living wage and I think they're very underappreciated um, in fact, you know, all these companies like Amazon, I think mostly can exist because they also utilize the services of the USPS. Right. So I'm all for those mm. people getting paid well. But like, does. Yeah. Where does that tip go? Yeah, I have no idea. I do have I have a couple of voicemails here because I wouldn't mind um, kind of grouping these all together today because I feel like tipping is such a is such a conversation starter that can also dominate a show for weeks mm -hmm. on end. So here's a quickie from Garrison in Chapel Hill related to. Uh, tipping and tip regrets. About eight years ago, I was at a brewery in Connecticut and bought about uh, two cases of beer, um, special craft beer. And as the same point of sale system on the inside and outside, they turned it around and I pushed out of habit 20% on a two cases to go and have never let myself uh, get over that. So uh, <laughs> that's an, my example of tipping regret power out yeah if you're just grabbing a bunch of two go beers and that sounds yes. like it's probably a pretty high tab if it's two cases of specialty beer and then you're just tipping 20 percent on that again like i'm i don't want I, I hate arguing against tipping because it only makes you sound cheap or whatever but i yeah. guess i still believe that like you are tipping for a service there and in this case you didn't receive service other than them possibly handing you your change I also very much identify with I'm let's let's say that was like 40 bucks for the beer. Let's go with a Is that how much beer costs? I don't know. I don't buy a lot of beer. Well, I know how much athletic brewing is. It's very overpriced. I tell you that I had a um a near beer Corona at the LAX airport that I think was $20. <laughs> Yes, you did. And, did and, I well, mention that? It was, it, it was with a margarita pizza or something like that. Yes. You had a pizza. It was like and a $45 for those two yeah, items. 40 yeah. something dollars. It was shocking. But let's just say that this guy paid. Well, here, let's do the math the on this. Let, let's say, what is what is 14 times four? Because a six pack of Bodhi's Afa, which is, um, which is like a kind of common uh, IPA around here, but also, you know, kind of, you know, something that you're paying for, is $14. So a case okay. would be four six packs right so that's 56 bucks a case maybe there'd be some markdown because you're buying in bulk but essentially let's you're looking at a bill that's a little bit over 100 bucks or about 100 so 20 bucks, bucks. Yeah. let's say that's 20 bucks mm -hmm. now here's the thing 20 bucks is that's real money but on the other hand it's also 
typically not the kind of thing you'd think about for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. But I would mm -hmm. exactly like this listener. This would be something that would dog me was the fact that I just kind of acted <laughs> sort of haphazardly without thinking it through, hit the button. I would spend the rest of my life thinking about that 20 bucks. Yeah, I, I mean, I still, speaking of me not being nice to myself, but I still cringe over that, like, that weird moment I had when we were in Mexico not all that long ago. And, like, I sort of felt like the, the waiter was not, first of all, just did not return to my table at all. I wanted to order more food, and I just sat there forever. He was busy. I wasn't mm -hmm. getting angry about it, but at a certain point, I'm like, I just need to get out of here. And then I'm like, I'm standing up. I'm sort of like following him around the restaurant, finally asking for my check. And then him just taking my money and not offering me any change back and just assuming yeah. that the rest was going to be a tip. And that like irritated me, and then I asked for change, and then mm -hmm. he didn't give me good change to tip, and I realized I, was just, I kind of stamped out of there. And then I looked at the math later. I'm like, well, that meal was so cheap. I didn't even have a beer to go with that I just had like water or something and it's just like oh like while I felt like he was taking advantage of me he was taking advantage of me for prices that wouldn't even register like not even an ATM fee here in the states and then I'm like why did I get it in my craw that I was being taken advantage of when we were talking about such small margins and then I blame the like, guy who was banging down the plaster at your timeshare <laughs> yeah that was the same day exactly um hey one more uh perspective here and this is from somebody who actually delivers appliances and we're always talking about like oh nice hey you know like uh, what yeah, is the I'm tipping curious etiquette if, around what, there and if how common that is for people to tip i i think of myself as being a real extra special person who does that but maybe that's more common than i thought hey guys it's uh listener jesse in albuquerque new mexico uh, I was just listening to your your conversation about uh, delivery drivers and tipping them and, and Luke's practice of uh, making sure that both drivers see that money was handed over. Mm -hmm. I work for a major home improvement concern, an orange hmm. one. I don't know where they're headquartered. Um, hmm. Hmm. And I Lowest? that's my job. I deliver and install home appliances. And... In the Southwest, uh, you're right, the tipping isn't often, um, but it is appreciated. I can tell you that the driver of the vehicle makes $13 a drop and his assistant makes $10 a drop. Now, I want to oh. pause it there for a second because wow. that can't be a full day's wage, right? Because like a drop, the last time we had something like that installed, I think they said they had a total of nine or 10 that they were doing in a day. Does that... That doesn't work out right. Is that is that like you're paid on top of a base pay? You know, this is a question that Jesse knows the answer. Yeah, to, I know. I'm asking me. you. Sorry, I just wanted to it like. It sounds sort of like, like no. It's I'm. I mean, I I'm imagining that. And Jesse, will you get back to us on this? I'm guessing that yeah, it's there's an hourly wage, and then on top of that, so if you have a really busy day where you've got to do ten deliveries, maybe that's not a busy day. I don't know. Yeah. And you're carrying a lot of heavy stuff up and down stairs. You're also getting a sort of a pay bump for that. I sure hope. I mean, yeah, there's just no so. way. It's not sort of, you, that's not a living wage if it's if you're yeah. just getting paid a hundred dollars a day. Uh, a lot of times that includes installation, unless it's a dishwasher. Well, um, you could, Luke. I might suggest you know <laughs> tipping an even dollar amount, so it's easy for them to split up. I definitely like that you make sure that both see it because there are some sneaky. Sneaky mofos out there. <laughs> um, if you wanted to watch fubos. the world burn, you could t you could tip each one of them ten dollars in secret and not tell the other one, just to you know make oh. their day interesting. <laughs> watch uh, the world burn in the truck. Jesse has a lot of time um, to consider like yeah. <laughs> psychological experiments. Um, that's a really interesting perspective, especially after pay, you know playing a bunch of voicemails and reading perspective of us, the tippers, mm -hmm. to hear somebody who does deliver appliances. It's not done all the time, especially in the Southwest, like he says, um, but uh, it is very much appreciated, and and that's uh, that's good advice too. You can like either like try to have it a, an evenly split type of situation to make sure that they both see it. Boy, can you imagine? Can you imagine working all day with somebody in your truck who you just know if that person gets paid is going to try to pocket it? or is going to you know, it gets tipped is going to try to pocket it like how do you man how do you just like spend well, your day with that person I was in kind of a situation like that when I was a valet in college I worked for a place called Pacific Parking and we would you know do golf tournaments and uh, I would park cars out front of uh, Duke's Chowder House there mm. on Lake Union and 
we were supposed to pool the tips. That was the rule. You just put all the tips in this paper bag, and then at the end of the shift, they get divided up. But the problem was I knew there were some people pocketing the tips, pocketing mm. their tips. So then do I continue to put my tips into the into the paper bag, or do I hold back some of my tips so I'm not the only person that's getting under-tipped in the process? Right, because then, yeah, I mean, that's kind of bad behavior begets bad behavior, right? I yeah, mean, because that, I feel like, I felt like if I just put all my tips in, then I'm going to I'm gonna get sort of penalized financially for this. So I, I think I sort of, well, you know what I really did was... Stole a car. Ripped... <laughs> I unintentionally ripped the gear shipped off of a Jaguar and oh, then yeah, yeah, put it back on and then parked the Jaguar in the way back and made sure I didn't bring it, didn't return it to the owner. So any amount of tip stealing the other people were doing was fine compared to the fact that I broke someone's Jag and didn't want to take the blame for it. You were pretty young here, right? It was high school or college? College, I college think. College age. Yeah, like, yeah. Looking back... As a wizened 47-year-old, are you 48 now? No, we're both 47. I'm 47. Okay. Um, my dad, has on the phone with my dad the other day, he's like, you're about to be 48, right? I'm like, dude, I got like eight months. Can we calm down with that <laughs> shit? Uh, anyway. Um, it's funny because you and I both round up. We're both like, we're yeah, pretty much 50. But, but you don't like someone else do that. doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, do you, looking back, like in the moment you probably freaked out, but looking back, are you like, oh, that probably wasn't permanently damaged anyway. That probably just like screwed I think it might off. have already been a problem. Ah, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It came mm -hmm. off way too easy. <laughs> But know. what was weird the, was looked at it comes off way too. Easy. What I what I'll never get out of my head was the weird look, the weird appearance of a gear shift that's been denuded. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was just this little it looked like one of the people when Ursula takes their voice in The Little Mermaid and they become this little sea worm. That's what it looked like. It was a sad little metal thing a little uh -huh. slim metal thing like it's not designed to be looked at it's designed right. to be underneath this other apparatus i remember just being like car yeah I'm not supposed to see <laughs> like that's like walking I muttered in under somebody my breath. when they're changing oh i was not supposed to see that all right well that's what i got for you luke we just got to do a whole segment on tipping got to go through all of our voicemails and Heck emails yeah. on that thank you everybody. um yeah jesse get back to us on more of the uh wage structure of mm -hmm. and and any other cool stories or interesting stories of appliance moving in the southwest i'm yeah. very here for that absolutely uh and again if you want to give us a call and leave us a message it's 206-414-8285 tbtl all right andrew i'm off to um enter the house and find out if i um uh, if oh i own root God. sports again <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious. Or if I'm going full Fubo today. <laughs> Never go full Fubo. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. We're going to be back here tomorrow with more Imaginary Radio for you. In the meantime, have a great Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. And please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to you all. I'm done with wolves now. I'm into angry unicorns. <laughs> if I was a unicorn, I'd never be angry. Power out.